So open source routing software has nothing to do basically with uh, open flow. But I put these slides because anytime you do anything with open flow or SDN or any of these things, you will run into these pieces of software. And um, so if you go to Wikipedia, it has a bigger list. And I didn't put the big list here because really these three that are the one that I ran into myself when uh, going through the open flow and SDN and so on and so forth. So different SDN tools, different open flow tools, they use these three pieces. And I put them in the order in which I believe they are being used. Quagga is very famous, very popular. And this is basically a piece of software you can download from somewhere. And uh, then you have a router on your PC if you have enough uh, output input ports. All right. If you have a VM, you can download it onto the VM and then you have a virtual router there. Okay. And so this is very widely used for many things. And now it is used for real things as well because everything is becoming a VM. Everything is becoming a software. And so these pieces, which were first just, you know, for people to experiment with and play with, now they're being used in production. Right? The next one is BIRD. BIRD Internet Routing Demon. And uh, this came from uh, some European uh, university. Anyway, it has um, many things, and now it is slowly replacing Quagga. Okay, it is used in several internet exchanges as a route server and it has replaced Quagga because of its scalability issues, because Quagga has some scalability issues. Now, this claim is from BERT by themselves. Okay, so I, I cannot independently verify that this is really happening. But Quagga is very famous, as I said. I read about Quagga everywhere, and then I then read, read about BERT and it says that it is replacing it. So I put that first. And the third one is ZARP. <coughs> ZARP is designed by Berkeley, and um, but it has been replaced by Quagga. So, I mean, that is the third one. So, between the bird and Quagga, I know somebody is first, and then ZARP is there, and then there's a whole list in, in, in Wikipedia. So, now, if you want to know about OpenFlow, then there are many other pro software that you will run into. And I just decided to talk about four here because the list is longer than like 60, 70. I myself personally prepared the slides on about um, 20 or 30 and then I gave up. Okay, so I'm not going to go to 20 or 30. I'm just going to show you where to find them if you need them. But these four are important, so I'm going to talk about them. First is Flowvisor. <clears throat> the Flowvisor fits directly below the controllers. You, you could have many, many controllers running, and there could be different controllers, technically, or, or, or say, let me put it um, theoretically at least. You could have different controllers, although I would have difficulty really very fine that but anyway so let's say you have many different tenants and each of them has a controller they can talk to the flow visor and the flow visor will talk to the switch to the switches and by doing this what flow visor is doing is making these this whole thing multi-tenant so the controllers don't have to worry about virtualizing each controller controls whatever pieces it controls and has complete control over that and um, and then the, these are, could be divided. So half of this switch, for example, could belong to one controller, other half to other controller. And what the flow wire does is the switch thinks it is talking directly to the controller. So it sends to that. And then the flow visor intercepts it, looks at it, what it is, where it is going, and then gives it to the right controller. Okay. So in that sense, it provides the it provides the slicing. It slices the network into pieces which are controlled by each controller. Um, and so, because every packet is in inspected, 
it does cause slight latency, but other than that, basically, so, you know, I mean, um, that is the goal of Flowvisor. It is developed by Stanford uh, ON Lab. I think they call it ON or ONRC Lab. O optical, sorry, Open Networking Research Center, ONRC Lab. All right, any question about Flowvisor? Mininet, you have already used, so you know, but I put this slide here just for the completeness. So it is widely used emulation environment. Again, it has nothing to do with OpenFlow, but it has implemented OpenFlow as well. So Mininet is the, for emulation of networks. <coughs> and it can simulate end host switches, routers, links, and Linux. And um, it is very widely used for prototyping of the software-defined networks. So in SDN work, this is very widely used. Even I have heard that it is used in production. Production means that in a company, if you have a network, you have a real network and you have mini net simulation of it. All right. If you want to change anything in the real network, first you simulate it in the mini net. If it goes okay, then you put it into the real network. So it's that good. So it, it has a built-in open V switch and it has open flow capable switch separately. Wow. And then you have used the command line, MN, topology, tree, and so on and so forth. So I don't have to tell you. And it, you can use diagnosis. You can use uh, perf, iperf, ping, and other things. <clears throat> and um, not only that, there is a mini net code for several popular commercial switches. So you could buy a Cisco switch and a mini net code for it. And that's how you put your production environment in the mini net, is that it is not just a general switch, it's the real Cisco switch in there. Okay, so this is a very useful piece. Um, third thing is RYU. Um, so this one is um, developed by NTT. And what it does is it has all the open flow stuff just like other controllers. But on the top of that, it integrates with OpenStack to support open flow. Now, what is OpenStack? Everybody knows what is OpenStack, right, by now? Right, so OpenStack is what the cloud management system and that is used in the real clouds, such as Rackspace and other people, they use OpenStack. And so in those clouds, you can use RYU to manage open flow switches. So provide software component with well-defined APIs for network management and control applications. And um, it supports all those things. And then can easily set up a multi-node open stack environment using pre-configured RYU VM image file. And that is one of the things that is true for most of the things that we talked about, including Quagga or, you know, or um, Mininet or um, everything that we have talked about so far, is that everything nowadays comes as VM appliance. So you download this file and um, and then you just run it on one of the hypervisors, whatever it is suited for, and you have the thing going, right? So, so is RYU. RYU is, um, <coughs> runs on a uh, appliance image file. Route flow. Now, so the route flow is an extension which allows you to do routing. Now, OpenFlow generally, I mean, is layer two stuff, right? But if you want to do routing over that infrastructure, you can use RouteFlow. What RouteFlow does is that it takes your virtual topology and you say, well, I want to have one router here, one router there. So you have those routers, which are VM by themselves. And they are connected by whatever method you want them to connect. These are actually all virtual connections. And so they generate, um, and, and generally you will be running Quagga on them, right? Because they are routers. And so they will run OSPF or BGP or whatever. And then, so, and they, they put that, all that stuff, they give it to the route server and the route flow server. Route flow server then programs the open flow switches to, to implement that forwarding. 
So here it is from layer three, come down to layer two. All right, layer three is virtual, which runs on a physical layer two right here. And so this virtual topology, we, we call them route flow clients. They give their thing to the server and the server centrally implements them on all the switches. <laughs> Okay, route flow. Um, little bit more detail is that this one shows that you, you have a VM here, a VM here. This VM is a router, this VM is not. And there is a V switch, right? Since this VM is a router, it has this routing protocol, Quagga or whatever. So it has a kernel space and it has a user space, right? In the user space, you have the route engine, which takes some information from the kernel space and then produces the information which is sent to the route flow server, which has a database. Route flow server also has a GUI for human beings to, to control whatever policies they want. Anyway, this database is fed to the controller and which may consist of the proxy, may consist of the applications, may consist of the statistics and topology discovery. So basically the topology discovery is going this way. And the flow starts are going this way. So these, you see the arrows directions, these are unidirectional arrows. So these go into the database and then the, from the database, the information comes for the route flow proxy, which basically program the switches. Any question about how all this works? Um, and there are references for each of these things, more details. Um, <coughs> then there is a whole list actually. Um, and as I said, first I had about 10, 15 slides like this with five each, four or five each, and then I gave up on them and just put one. Um, So this list has five of them. And um, for some reason, uh, I felt that these were more important than the other 45. So, so let's see. So AVR is, a, is used for the flood light network administration and testing. Now flood light is the, is the controller from, anybody remembers from whom, who made that? Go ahead. Yeah, big switch network. So that's really a commercial um, controller in some sense, right? And 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 this actually it turns out must be there from big switch network, uh, which basically puts the graphical user interface, uh, you know, for admission and testing. So this is similar to SNAC snack that we saw for the open flow controller for for uh, for NOx, etc. Now OFLAP is a basically a benchmark which measures the open flow operations per second for a controller, for a switch actually, for a switch. So if you have a switch and you want to see whether it is a fast switch or not switch, you measure it in terms of how many open flow operations it can do. Right? So this is a benchmark. C bench is the thing that you use to do benchmark. So it's the benchmarker which measures the performance of the controller by generating packet in events, new flows from the bench of, um, for new flows from a bunch, bunch of switches. So this one measures the controller. So basically what happens is the switches will say, oh, I got a new flow. Please tell me what to do with it. That is called packet in event. So it sends that packet in to the controller and the controller responds back. Right, and um, so this one generates um, the packet. The switches generate the packet in event. They go to the controller, and we measure the controller, figure out whether, how fast the controller is. Twister is test as to automation to manage and drive test cases written in any scripting language, which is supposed TCL, Python, and Perl. So you could <coughs> write whatever you want to do. 
and a script and then run it on Twister. Ford Knox is an extension of Knox which automatically checks new flow rules to check if it violates the security policies. Now it has been succeeded by SE Floodlight. So this was for Knox, Ford Knox, but now Knox is not used by the way, you know that Knox has gone to Cox. So this is for Floodlight. SE Floodlight is for the Floodlight. Okay. And that brings us to the end of this. So summary is five key points as usual. First of all, you might just want to remember these controllers, Knox, Pox, Beacon, Floodlight, Trema, and SNAC, which is the graphical interface for Knox. Out of these right now, Pox and Floodlight actually are probably remaining, but they are also going to go away soon. But anyway, they are remaining. Trema is uh, from one of the Japanese companies, so that is again might be used in some kind of production environments. In terms of software routers, we have Quagga, Bird and Zarp. Quagga is very famous. Uh, Flowvisor is used for multi-tenancy and multiple controllers. In terms of tools, we saw Mininet, Routeflow and RYU just a minute ago. So you remember Mininet is for emulation, Routeflow is for routing and RYU is for um, what? Anybody remembers? Nobody remembers open something? <laughs> yeah, at least for open stack. Other tools, and there are then testing, security, benchmarking tools, and there's a whole list of 100 tools somewhere, and I will give you the URL for that in a minute. Um, but anyway, any question about any of this? So, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a slide? Yeah, please. Uh -huh. This network with these switches may belong to an enterprise or an operator. And that router VM switches and for is it a client network, a HP network? Okay. I like the question. Let me repeat the question. And actually, it's better explained by the next slide. The question is. What do these routers represent compared to the switches? The switches belong to the cloud provider. Who do these routers belong to? Is that a question? Yeah. Okay. So the whole physical infrastructure does belong to the cloud provider. And each tenant has its own part of it. It doesn't really matter here because we are just looking at one tenant. Okay. So let's say Physically, it might be, this switch might belong to, the, to, to Amazon, but I have rented it, so right now it belongs to me, right? And I want to run in this, um, and actually this switch is a part of a processor inside which I have two VMs, three VMs, and I want to run router on one of them, right? And I want to use the other one as is something connected to the router or whatever that is, right? So. All of this virtual stuff belongs to the tenant for sure. Okay. The physical stuff technically belongs to the tenant for the time duration and belongs to the cloud provider otherwise. And the new thing is that these routers can come and disappear and come back again at the whim of the tenant. Yeah. to be able to configure both of their customers, routers as well as switches, so that they can have virtualized... Uh, virtualized in L3 environment, yeah. Okay. 